Stone person's eye. Hello. Oh, See, I so, forgot about this. So Dave is up. Yeah. Hey. I just got up. So Dave just got up. Woke up. So, uh, what so, time is it? Here? It's uh, probably the seven. We got MTV at the gig setting up, even as we speak. Okay. Seven fifteen. That is. Yeah. Take us about 20 minutes to get over the gig. So, well, I mean, the MTV can wait a little while. I mean, it's, they gotta it's, wait. It's not gonna be that long, yeah. Okay, yeah, they gotta wait till you get ready. There right, you go. So we'll wait till you get ready. So, we got caught in traffic. Everybody should join a rock and roll band for at least like two months out of their life. It worked for me, it, it got me out of my shell. When I was a kid, I was a fat teenager. I just sat around smoking pot, listening to Black Sabbath records, like, yeah, it's cool. You know, completely stoned. Um, nowhere with girls, like completely nowhere. Um, I didn't notice, you know, I wasn't sad or depressed or anything. I was just a schlub, just walking around. But when I realized I could be in a band, that all of a sudden just switched on something to me. Like, Wait, I can actually, don't have to consume all the time. I can actually create. I thought I was put on earth as a consumer. I mean, music is more fun than anything, I think, because music incorporates so many different things. It incorporates all the basics of life. I mean, music is based on life. You know, when the first caveman came out there, he's probably going to, you know, all right, okay, here's my life, boom, 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 beat on a drum. Um, oh, look, there's a cave girl, boom, 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 boom. Oh, now I want to eat, boom, boom, boom. And so it's, it, it's everything, everything that goes on in life is right inside music, all the time. And uh, you can see it everywhere you go, whether it's electronic music or world beat or whatever, everybody's going like this, I love it. We're supposed to do that, we're meant to do it. You know? It's what separates us from animals makes us the higher animal. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to learn how to dance to hard rock music in case you have forgotten the age of techno. This is how you dance to hard rock music, motherfucker. Oh, 
somebody to be forward, you know. The guiding and, light. Not the guiding light, but he's got a, <laughs> he's kind of aggressive, you know. Really aggressive. So oh, everybody God, can kind of sit back, do their thing, and he's always like punching away, and we're just kind of like behind him. So they know that that I'm the I'm the monster magnet guy. I've been since the beginning. They weren't that interested in the beginning in writing songs. Um, they were just like everybody else. They wanted to be in a rock band. They wanted to get high. And I was a workaholic. Eventually, they came around to realize that, well, he, you know, he's writing faster and faster. And so they would, um, hey, you want to slow down? And I'm like, no, you, you can never slow down. And stuff, if it's coming out, you got to grab it. So now their job is to interpret what I'm saying Hopefully, when, when I don't even have to say much, you know, because we've been around a while, and I'm like, Hawkwind bass part, Black Sabbath drum part, or you know, a mute or a mutant version of like, so Black Sabbath meets Pink Floyd, uh, but skinny, you know, and color it purple, and they'll go okay, and they'll do it. They're great. I mean, they're awesome. They they'll look at each other and just go, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? It's a good job. I mean, we could either be <clears throat> home pumping gas, or we could be on the road doing this, and this is much better than pumping gas. And Definitely. we get to express ourselves creatively. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so we're like, we... we, we <laughs> 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 She's gonna teach you how to dance Who's gonna show you how to fly Who's gonna call you on the lane Don't smoke and slack and little sucker you are Get you from behind Who's gonna ring your little bell Who's gonna calm you into bad Till a vision fades A revolution that's sell Hey When are you gonna blow the day When are you gonna blow the screen When you all tell them That the play doesn't watch And you found a way to make your own dream the crap doesn't wash and you found a way to make yourself scream, baby. Well, I died a million times. And I picked my culture bell. And I built myself again. responsible for um, not only myself but for other people. I have to learn to appreciate things at a very, very fast pace. Like the show. That was a great show. Okay. I'll be on the bus in an hour heading towards Tilburg and uh, she's probably listening to Vivaldi or something going, okay, let's go. 
So if I did this maybe like came out and did five or six shows a year, I'd be like, this is the best thing I've ever, you know. Don't get me wrong, it's not the same work as like pumping gas, you know. That's a different kind of work. This work pays, spiritually, pays off spiritually. The end result of all my work is a place where I can go that's totally mine. It's like recreating the, uh, recreating the world that I grew up in to fit my taste, you know. This is my regular life. Everything else is now um, an escape for me. I came to that conclusion about five years ago. I was like, wait a second. I keep talking about my regular life as if that's my regular life. No, this. This now is my regular life. So I try to make everything else fit into that. Like, uh, try to fly my daughter out when she can get out here, and uh, a lot of phone. You're looking for the one who fucked your mom. That's not me. That's not me, baby. Oh. You're looking for the one who made you cry. That's not me. Every time I get home, I spend all my time with, with small children playing. That's all I, I love them. I take care of all my, my nieces and nephews. I'm just like, I'm home. I'm gonna call out my sister, give me the station wagon and send the kids over. Because they're the only people in the world that I can honestly, honestly have a good time with all the time. They're hysterical. They're really funny and they don't care about you. They're just like, ah. If you wanna stuff your garbage in that hole. Unless you're contributing something somewhere, life is is meaningless, you know? You need to be able to share something with someone all the time. Okay, well. It's also, I mean, it's pretty egoist too. I mean, it's like I'm sharing what I choose to share. Yeah. But so it's therapeutic right, at the same time, plus it's, I mean, it's therapeutic in a way that I can get my demons out on paper. But did your demons bother you a lot? Um, not to the point where I'm gonna jump off a cliff or anything, but yeah, if I leave them un, unwritten, they will take over. I'm not a violent person by nature, so I would imagine I'd probably just do a lot of pain-killing drugs, like heroin or something, you know? Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> you think? I don't know, I thought, why do you throw it in the crowd? Everybody did drugs in the 70s. 
You just didn't question. It's the equivalent of wearing a backwards baseball cap now. The promise of drugs was amazing. Um, the culture was a drug culture. The music talked about drugs. Um, drugs equaled freedom. Um, what drugs promised weren't what drugs were delivering. Um, just because my inhibitions were lower didn't mean my ideas were getting any better. That's a big fallacy, you know. With, with drugs and creativity, people, you know, look, oh, you know, this guy did the best work on drugs. Well, he may have done his best work on drugs, that's probably because he was uninhibited. But if he was uninhibited without the drugs, he probably would have made more. And uh, so that was bothering me. So I started cutting down. Stop, stop, very nice. Very nice. Can you lift your, your, your uh, trousers, your pants, just a little bit so I can see more of your shoes? Well, just lift them on your knees, you know? I still, yeah. No? No, I can do it. You can hold them up if you want from your knees, you know? That's about well, all I can. No, not they, like that. They won't you go. Like, wait, 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 wait. Shut up for a second, will you? Okay. They won't do it because they're leather pants. I can't do it that way. Okay. Sheesh. Um, then I went into a tailspin around 96 and got totally rock and roll crazy and just drinking a bottle of vodka at night, washing it down with four or five Valiums, smoking pot, doing cocaine, um, <clears throat> having sex with as many girls as I possibly could. I've uh, gotten into like violent situations. Uh, Thank you very much. All right. You're a dedicated artist, you are. And uh, I got pneumonia. Uh, very, very sick for like four or five months, but still touring, not knowing. And I wound up in a hospital in Canada where they said, you know, you've got about one day left in you or you're going to die. So we're just going to put an IV in your arm. And they did all this stuff. And uh, after that, it took about two weeks in the hospital. I was like, I think I've seen the light. The sky splits open. <laughs> the sky splits open. Oh, Jesus. I first started off writing about my experiences in high school as just a, like a stoner kid. And to add on top of that, I would write um, just strange, I guess you'd call it poetry. I wouldn't call it poetry, but somebody would call it poetry. Like how to color something normal, extra normal. How to bring a normal circumstance into emotional into words that would express the emotion. So if I broke up with my girlfriend, it wouldn't be just breaking up with my girlfriend. It would be like the sky cracked open, you know? Everything was very dramatic and I had to like biblicize the whole thing, put it in biblical proportions. The skies open and the ocean swells and you're in I'm in So let the mirror and love yourself my sweetest baby has joined me in hell. Oh, I said she's joined me in Oh, man.
lot of wanking going on. I mean, you get into like delusions of grandeur. You know, you start off a song like I'm lonely, and by the end of the song, I'm like I'm king of the fucking world. You know, blah, blah, blah. it's done. And I, whew, all right, now another song. It's it's a lot of fun because you start to get the power from the music to uh, support your words. Take a word like no, and just I could flat out say it here. No, but, but you put a chord on it, it goes dun 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 no dun dun dun, and all of a sudden it's like, uh oh, I guess he really means it. Or if you put a goofy thing behind it, like diddly 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 diddly, no, you'd be like, he's an idiot. So that's the kind of support group you get when you start drawing from music and words, and like, doesn't always necessarily have to read well as a printed word. Read a book today It made me think of a life I lived That seemed so far away I guess I wouldn't call it dead I read a name or two And let the ghosts just start to roll I had them locked away I guess they cut their own parole Now face the music, son some people live to remember when But you're no storage space You've lived a dozen lives since then So what would Modoc do? If his memory got too full He'd find the power source And then he'd pick what plugs to pull I looked in the mirror Somebody blew up I turned on my TV And somebody blew up I learned how to lie well and somebody blew up I learned how to live true and somebody blew up Still today, just taking a little death, just like the doctors say. I never get that kind of rest. The movies on it, man. They got me nullifying ghosts. I'm better dead than real. I guess I'll never get off the boat. I looked in the mirror. Somebody blew up I turned on my TV Somebody blew up I learned how to lie well Somebody blew up I learned how to live true Somebody blew up So I went to comic books in the 80s. Like all my love for the, for the old comic books I had when I was a kid came out and I realized there were stores like this. One opened in my hometown and I just walked down there and said, you have to give me a job. You know, I'm telling you. And he refused about three or four times. And finally, I was there every day. He goes, all right, you can have the job. And then within a month, I had the control of the place and he left me alone. And I just loved it because I got to indulge in all this stuff that usually is pretty expensive to indulge in. It was escapism and very personal too. Like comic books, you don't read comic books with other people. It's not like, hey, gather around kids, let's all read the same comic. 
a very personal thing. And for loners, comic books are very important. And I was pretty much a loner. And you'll notice that if you go to comic book conventions, you see all these weirded out dweeb people, you know. Like, they spend a lot of time by themselves. It's their little thing, you know. So um, I love the fact that so much work was put into stuff that was so relatively inexpensive. Waking up, I watch another sun go down. Another day spent underground. In my world, it kills you. And I remember how the world should have cried. On the day Jack Kirby died, I wonder if I'm Well, I'll never trust myself again, but I don't care. We'll just set that plastic soul on fire and watch it. that much difference between um, rock personalities and comic book personalities is probably what what helped me get into rock and roll in the first place. It's a, it's a nice segue from being a, a kid to an adolescent, you know, to a teenager. Um, and for me, I had plenty of help. I mean, when I stopped reading comic books, I was reading like Spider-Man and Conan the Barbarian. And the next thing you know, I was listening to Black Sabbath and uh, Hawkwind. There's not much difference. <laughs> You know, these are like sonic versions of the comic book. But um, of course, to kids, it's a big step up. You know, it's like, oh, this is not kid stuff. This is adult stuff. When actually it is really kid stuff. But are you basically saying that Monster Magnet is kid stuff? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, the live show, definitely kid stuff. Definitely. The music itself, no. I'd say the, the actual lyrical content, not kid stuff. You know, that would be, if I was Kiss, it would be kid stuff. You know, I'm not singing like, it's cold gin time again. I'm singing about personal relationships and stuff. But as far as live goes, yes, it's a very adolescent affair. Very sexual, very celebratory. You know, it celebrates um, minimalism, really. You know, me sweaty men on stage, you audience, water, fire, basic stuff. I like it that way live. Cuts through a lot of the bullshit.
could slide right in your moment If only I was in your skin And I said My main competition is not other bands, but it's like Jurassic Park movies, you know? Kids go to see that, and they go to see rock and roll, but that sounds like shit, because they just watch this Dolby THX, you know, fades, flanged out, fucking pan dinosaurs, you know, a million feet high. It's like, cling, 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 uh-oh. Believe me, if I could afford pyro, and all that stuff I could, but I can't. So that's how we got the burning guitar thing. I was just like, give me something I could set on fire. You know, I don't care, it's cheap, you know, it's cheap. You get some barbecue fluid, you put it on a piece of wood, you set it on fire. End result is just like when you're in the 20th row and you look, you go, fire, that's great. Cause I know what it's like to be in the crowd and I would have loved that. So yeah, you start burning through the cliches very, very fast when you're a touring band. When you play like almost 200, shows a year, you know, there's hardly any cliches left. Well, I'm my buddy Joe, give me a laughing pill, yeah. Uh -huh. I said it tasted like shit, and it gave me the chills. I saw his girlfriend's face in a bucket of water. He said a fuck with a snatch, and a nipple the water. spent the first bunch of years just very serious. And uh, that had its limitations, you know? It had its limitations. I mean, a lot of critics and a lot of people were very impressed and very happy, and all blah, 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 this is very, you know, very good involved. But I didn't see a lot of people having fun. What I saw was people going, that was very good. And I said, well, you know, it's not like I'm playing Beethoven here, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, it's supposed to be rock and roll and you're supposed to be able to shake your ass a little bit. So I get pushing it, pushing it over the top till finally I'm like all dressed in leather and jumping off of platforms, which actually feels really good, you know? And there's time enough for me to go back. I don't think I'm gonna ruin anything by doing this now. Shut me up, cause I'm going crazy with this planet in my hands. Shut me up, cause I'm going crazy with this planet in my hand, shut me up, cause I'm going crazy with this planet in my 
another corridor day in and day out the life of a road warrior now which hotel are we in? which city? Let's see 258 you gotta make sure he gets the animals out <laughs> 